Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Find the Fun, where we try to make the most out of a bad situation. Now, I know you have no idea what Find the Fun is, but it's a new series that we here at Channel 7 are going to be starting, like you're seeing right now. Every month or two, we'll be deep diving into a topic which may be just a little controversial. This week, we're going to be talking about a very serious topic, mental health. Mental health is a complex issue and I could not hope to fully cover in this video. Instead, I'm going to be responding to five factors. Number one, general statistics. Number two, social media. Number three, gun violence. Number four, suicide. And number five, the novel coronavirus. This is your trigger warning. Topics such as suicide and eating disorders will be discussed. Mental health issues and or disorders are serious issues, which affect five, one in five adults and approximately 6.1 million youth. Today, while mental health affects over 66 million adults, we're actually going to be looking at the US youth. Generation Z has the highest level of depression and anxiety ever recorded. This means that the youth that are in middle and high school right now, 42% of them report anxiety and 35% report depression. That is an insane number. Another factor that is not helping either is social media, and in particular, models, very pretty models. These models which spend upwards of $10,000 for plastic surgery, who make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, then influence the younger population. That everyone needs to look a certain way in order to be successful in life. This, of course, is not true. The problem then is that people, especially young people, will see these models and be influenced by these influencers. This can lead to poor body image, which in turn can lead to bad things like eating disorders, such as anorexia, which in bad cases can cause victims to stop eating, or bulimia, which causes victims to eat dangerously large amounts of food and then force themselves to purge said food. The worst part about all of this is suicide. Suicide has grown at an alarming rate. According to the CDC, between 2007 and 2017, the rate of suicide has increased by 56%. From Business Insider, quote, the increase of youth suicide also sped up recently, according to this report. Between 2007 and 2013, the suicide rate for young people grew at an average of 3% per year. But between 2013 and 2017, that number shot up to 7% per year. Shooting up 5% like that just isn't good. The American Psychological Association says that another major reason Gen Z is so stressed is gun violence. 75% of Gen Z youth report being stressed about gun violence and 72% report being stressed about school shootings and similar events. Young people should not have to be stressed about a madman or woman coming into their safe learning environment and start shooting people. One last uh, piece of information that proves this is uh, the most, one of the most prevalent things right now, COVID-19. According to the Psychiatric Times, quote, overall, research demonstrates that COVID-19 is affecting the mental health of children and adolescents, and that depression and anxiety are prevalent, end quote. Some research done uh, were studies of kids in Bangladesh, China, Italy, and Spain. Now that I have told you just everything wrong with Generation Z, <laughs> let me tell you how to fix it. So I'm not an expert on this subject, but I reached out to someone who is. Uh, I reached out to Randy Sweeney, who's a school counselor at, for Jen's Union Middle and High School. She also co-leads the VUMS SRT, which is helping students find solutions to problems that they feel are in their school. Yeah, so I'm here uh, right now with uh, Randy Sweeney. Hi, I'm Randy Sweeney, and I'm the middle school counselor at Virginia Union High School. Generation Z is one of the has the highest level of anxiety and depression uh, recorded, um, and really, and there's like a lot of factors that play into that, like gun violence and. Um, school and a lot of other things. So what solutions do you think there are, both long and short term, 
for these problems? Yeah, there are a lot of things that are stressful. Um, there's a lot of things in our world right now that are stressful, stressful like COVID. Um, and then there are things like that you just named, like school and relationships, friends, things like that. Um, not to mention that especially at your age, you know, your body's going through lots of changes, hormone changes, brain development, and all of these things can contribute to our mental health. Um, or mental health issues and contribute to stress and things can lead to things like anxiety and depression. So what do you do? That's like the million dollar question, right? So the first thing I would say is what you're doing is huge. So just raising awareness about this topic, educating um, people, young people especially, about mental health issues and what the different stressors are, that is so huge. Um, you know, one of the things that is difficult about um, answering this question is that there's this big, there's a stigma in our society around mental health, and it prevents people from talking about it with their friends. It prevents people from getting help. Um, and so opening up these conversations and kind of like normalizing these conversations is really, really important. Um, so I appreciate it. So anxiety is the most common uh, mm -hmm. mental disorder in people your age and depression is the second most, I believe. ADHD might be the second, I'm not sure. Um, so really common signs for depression would be fatigue, you know, being tired all the time, feelings of hopelessness, um, losing interest in things that you used to be interested in, um, changes in eating or sleeping habits, um, what else? You know, and, and more seriously, thoughts of self-harm or suicide. Anxiety um, has some similar symptoms, but I would also say things like um, restlessness, um, you know, a lot of physical symptoms with anxiety, like rapid heartbeat, sweating, um, you know, feeling like got that butterflies in your stomach kind of feeling, um, irritability, um, I'm trying to think. Those are probably, you know, some, some pretty common ones. So, one, you know, the main thing I would say is if you are experiencing anxiety or depression or any mental health issue and it's gotten to the point where it's interfering in your life or it's feeling overwhelming, um, getting professional help is really important. And at your age, the best way to do that is to go to a trusted adult. And so when I talk about trusted adults, I mean a parent or guardian, a family member, um, a counselor at school, a teacher, just any adult that you trust and that you feel like is going to listen to you and, um, and help you. Because all of these mental health issues, um, eating disorders, like you said, de depression, anxiety, um, they are treatable, but they require professional help. So that's the main thing I would say. Um, if you're at the point where you're experiencing uh, mental health issues that are really interfering in your life. And so, but those are all things that we feel at times, right? Like we all feel irritable sometimes. You'll get annoyed at people. We all get fatigued. We all get tired. We all have lack of motivation sometimes. So the idea is when you're having those symptoms and they're not going away and they're starting to get in the way of your life. You know, if you're starting to feel overwhelmed by them, um, like you can't, you just can't get through them. Um, you know, like in the case of fatigue, like if you just can't get out of bed or um, you just can't get yourself to get out of the house and do stuff, that's when you want to reach out for help. There's lots of things that we can do ourselves to try and keep ourselves healthy and keep our stress level low. Um, because stress is what leads to anxiety and depression. So the first thing I would say is just things you can do every day to be healthy. So that's like getting enough sleep, eating healthy foods, 
um, getting exercise, you know, just all the things that you've always heard, you know, probably your parents tell you to do just to keep yourself healthy. Because if we are in a healthy place, then we're better able to deal with all of this stress that comes our way. So that's one thing I would say. Um, the next thing I would say is to find things that you can do every day that are fun and, and relaxing. So that could be playing sports, that could be playing an instrument or singing, it could be um, doing art, um, being with friends, really, really important, you know, having connections with people, being with family. So all these things, you know, that you want to make sure that every day you're doing something that feels good and that's fun and you enjoy doing. Then there's like coping strategies, right? And like stress management strategies. So this is for those times when maybe your anxiety has gotten to a point where you, you can't either um, think your way through it or um, do any of those other things like take a walk or um, you know talk to a friend like those things aren't helping these are like when your anxiety is kind of high so some of those strategies are things like mindfulness or breathing exercises um, or what we call grounding exercises which help sort of switch your brain from that um, emotional place that is um, reacting to stress and, and is really, really anxious to the thinking part of your brain that can kind of help you get through those feelings. Um, so it's really important to try lots of different coping strategies. You know, taking a bath is one too. Um, even taking a walk. You know, even some of the things you do to relax and have fun can also be your coping strategies when you're really, really anxious or if you're feeling really, really down. Um, but it's really important to try lots of different things because different things work for different people. And also different things work for people um, at different times. So something that might have worked for you one day might not work for you another day. So yeah, so those are some of the things that are helpful. Yeah. Um, thank you so much. You're so welcome. Thank you, Randy. Thank you, everybody who who helped with this. Um, thank you to What's the Story, Vermont. They really helped out with this video. Um, thank you to everybody else who helped with this. Uh, and I really do hope you enjoyed this, and I really do hope that you learned something. So, my advice to you, learn about things like this. Another piece of advice is to subscribe. We will see you hopefully again with another episode of this if it you know works out. But I'm Chance Koenig. This is Find the Fun. Thank you for watching. <laughs>